Alright, so let's jump in with the coverage of the warrior class, where it was actually really fun to make. Like, you have a lot of different synergies in Warrior between damage character, the rush mechanic, using your armor in a specific way. Like, really, uh, I like Warrior, like the mix, especially the mix, yeah. The mix between the control and the uh, mid board centric synergies, especially like using your armor to gain a board advantage. Like, m most likely, uh, I'm talking about the latest two cards I printed, the Ironclad and the new one mana weapon. For example, I really like this kind of design. So I tried to inspire myself from these to make the cards. So first off, uh, Battlefield Armor Smith 3 mana 2 3. Whenever this minion takes damage, give all minions in your hand plus one plus one. Yeah, hand buff. I had to. I had to. You, you know I had to. Um, honestly, this is really strong. This is really strong. Uh, does it fit in like the normal hand buff build? Maybe, maybe not. It depends really on the meta. Uh, maybe if you, like if you face a ball centric meta, a heavy ball centric meta, this is really good on its own. But if you face only like decks using spells and like not focusing on board, you might have to switch from the normal build to the um, the risky skipper one, because yeah, there is a risky skipper build. Uh, you have the crabot K already, uh, where this could fit in. Actually, this can fit in. Um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, like this is really good. Uh, I was. I was thinking about making this a pirate, because honestly, like, if you look at it, it's a pirate. <laughs> it's kind of a pirate. But I was like, would this be played in Pirate Warrior? Before the questline, maybe. After the questline, I'm not so sure. So maybe, yeah, I could have let the pirate tag in. Uh, on, sorry. But yeah. Alright, next up. Uh, next up, next up, what do we have? We have the Pakrono Whip. Yeah, the Pakrono's Whip. So, is it good in Warrior? Uh, first of all, you don't play that in Pirate Warrior. No, you, you just don't. You only want the anchor to be your guaranteed draw from the first reward of the questline, and from there you just noble. That's how the deck is built. Like, you are seeing uh, Pirate Warrior list going really heavy on the one drop, one drop, sorry, to complete the quest as fast as possible maybe before turn 5. Uh, so by doing that you don't want this kind of weapon. But this kind of weapon is interesting too because if you have someone drop and your opponent play a 3 health minion, well you can trade it and have a 1-1 one, one rush afterward to go in on another minion, for example, or like to synergize with everything rush related that you can have in Warrior. Um, yeah. In a vacuum, this is pretty okay on its own. Uh, not the most exciting weapon, maybe? Because like the power level is not as high as uh, as possible, but it's quite powerful nonetheless. And yeah, I think it's just neat. Honestly, on design, this is maybe one of my favorite. The frontline recruit, okay, okay. One mana, one, two. After a friendly minion's attack, gain plus one attack. Oof. <laughs> Romano, stop bringing snobbly one twos, one drop. Uh, no, I love this. Okay, so I wanted a one drop that like would not be a would not be usable in a uh, pirate warrior, but would incentivize you to build another type of aggressive uh, mid rangey warrior, right? And because like even in hunt before today. When I build a deck, I remember I remember that like you just cannot pass around the pirates because they are so strong in warrior and you don't have anything else. Like you have this one three mech, right? This is pretty good, uh, but that's it. Like you don't really have anything else that you could use as a one drop in a warrior except Dawn Warrior, obviously. Uh, but then it's pirates. Like you have to use the pirates, and I don't know. I wanted to change this a bit. Like, do you play that in Pirate Warrior? No, I don't think so, even if it's a really good card. Like, the quest line, like, coerce you, actually, into playing a bunch of one-drop pirates. So I don't think you have the place, or the... Like, you know, I don't think you have the place to put something like that in your deck. But anyway, uh, if this goes in some kind of aggressive, tokenish warrior that is not pirate, 
Uh, this is really good. Maybe a bit too good. So yeah, wait and see, I guess. Bridge. <laughs> okay, so inner power. One mana, dual class spell between uh, Paladin and Warrior. Give a damage minion plus two plus two. Um, I think... I, I really like all the, the, the dual class card in uh, Scholomance, almost every one of them. And Shield of Honor, unfortunately, is not one of them. I think they missed the mark on Shield of Honor. The one that gives plus three attack and Divine Shield to a damage minion. I don't know, I feel like if you're in a board combat and you want to buff a minion to go and take a value trade on another one, if this is a damage minion that you care about, you would like it like to have more health? I don't know, the Divine Shield didn't seem really interesting. Because if it's damage, this means that there was there were some like really lower stat lower static minion beforehand on the board. So this means that your opponent is most likely not gonna play like some super big statted one. Like I don't know how to say that, but like if your minion gets damage and not just killed in one attack, this is most likely because your opponent is playing some kind of tokenish deck, right? And if your opponent is playing some kind of tokenish deck, Divine Shield doesn't do much. Right? Divine Shield doesn't do much. So giving health instead seems more reasonable. And like one mana to give plus two plus two is really strong, but this is on a damage minion, so the condition is also pretty restrictive. I don't know, I really like the design like this. I think this is what Shield of Honor should have been, maybe. Or maybe I'm just completely wrong, and Shield of Honor is actually busted. Okay, another dual class card from uh, Warrior and Paladin. The Remote Control Protector, 1 mana 1 2 mech with tradable, taunt, and battle cry, if you control a damage minion, gain Divine Shield. What? That's a lot of words for only one drop. So first of all, it's a tradable card. Tradable cards we know they're really good. So it, this is basically play the minion, get the stats and the effect, or draw a card for one mana, both. Uh, as a one mana, one two mech with taunt, this is pretty bad. Like, you don't want to play that, just as a one mana, one two taunt. But if you control the damage minion, like it's, it comes to the rescue and protect it by gaining divine shield, making it a better righteous protector. But you can't play this on one. Except if you play like the one mana 2-4 that deals 3 damage to itself and then you coin this, but <laughs> let's not do that. Uh, it was, at the beginning I had it that if you control a damage character, but this is pretty... Like if you have a friendly damage character, like damaging the hero is so easy in Paladin and Warrior that... Uh, no, I didn't want to do that. Obviously you don't play that in... Uh, you don't play that in Call to Arms Paladin, but in Warrior you might play that in some kind of Hanbuff deck, first of all, and some kind of Tone deck, on the other hand, which is also Hanbuff when you think about it, but on the other one, on another build. Uh, I don't know, I think this is pretty neat, like the tradable part makes its first base power level having an extra something. When you don't have a damage minion in it, obviously you want to go and find proactive minions. Yeah, I, I like it. The bad mechanic box, so we talked about this one. Uh, in Hunter, we talked about how it was good, you could use the death rattle. What about Warrior? Well, Warrior, you have actually pretty good mechs. Like, you have a lot of mechs, too. Like, we just don't use them. And what about, like, Hump of Mech Warrior? Huh? Maybe not, because, like, you need Town Crier. You would use the, the Sremanagai I printed earlier, but in Warrior, just in normal hand of build, I will 100% play this. Because like the deck really lacks two drops that have a proactive effect. Okay, this is most likely like slow as an effect, but then it's really valuable. And like tutoring minions, especially mechs, means that you could play some really specific mechs that get really good when hand buffed. Like, th this was the idea. Like, you could play Zeliax, you could play the 1-3, one, one, or any other mechs that you want. And that would get, like, exponentially better the more plus one plus one you get to them. Rastion, so we talked about this also in uh, Hunter, but how about in Warrior? So in Warrior, we know we have this synergy with Dragon, right? We have Watley and we have the Ringmaster Baton, most importantly. And the Baton, honestly, 
Uh, this is really <laughs> this is really weird to say baton in French and then follow up with English. But yeah, the baton is really, really good. Like with this card and with the previous dragon, we are going to talk about it in uh, Warrior, like the one tutoring dragons. If you play these three together, like you must, most likely you're going to draw this one uh, early on and you're going to buff it early on. So on turn six, it's going to have like either two, I mean, sorry, four or even five attacks sometimes. And remember, conditioning on turn five, give plus two, plus two. So this comes the turn after. It's like to get back the tempo you lost by playing a two spell that didn't do anything immediately. Yeah, in Warrior, I think it's better than in Hunter. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, look at this art. Oh my god, dude. Like the person that did it, that uh, did the art, congrats. The Primal Draw Krog. 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 Yeah, Krog. 4 mana, 3 4 Beast. Yeah, why not? Butterfly, Invoke Galakron. Okay. After your hero attacks an enemy, this attacks it too. Ooh. Okay, so this is like the uh, Illidari Inquisitor effect from the age. I wanted to use the effect somewhere else. And to be fair, I, I just, like, I I didn't have any idea of what to do for the, uh, the Invoke card in Galakron. I wanted a minion. That's for sure, because like, uh, Warrior is the only one not having a minion for, to invoke in, on class cards. Uh, because the invoke effect is really good, like getting extra attack, that's not anything. And by doing this, if you go face, that's a 4 mana 3 4 with a fireball attached. I know this might seem a bit scary without condition. I mean, no, not what I'm saying. You have a condition, you're running a 7 drop in your deck. So that's a big liability. Um, so I think like the power level could be high. I had it as a two three. Maybe finally like the sweet spot is two four, but two four like it's it's underwhelming, you know. Three four, hmm. packing some uh, packing some power. Kergug, the stomper, two mana one four rush. Your rush minion have charge. Yes, I love it. Um, yeah, I, I, I wanted to have this kind of design for Warrior as a legendary. I was hesitating on, put, on, putting, ink, on put it, putting it in, yeah, putting it in on a, an epic, but legendary is better for this kind of stuff. So like, it's like a Tundra Rhino, but for rush minions and it's way cheaper. So like, I was thinking like, maybe you put it as a stream as a stream on a 2.5. Right, to not like be really, really like this is pushing the stuff really hard, um, and also I was thinking like maybe the first minion with rush you play each turn, the first rush minion you play each turn has uh, has tra charge, but then again like if you play rush minions in a deck and you face someone not using anything on the board, well your rush minion feels really bad. So to change that and give them more utility, you give them charge. SM Orc, good way. Last ditch ever, spell for Paladin and Warrior. So one thing I'm really bad at, it's designing control spell and most importantly, board clear. Like, I'm really bad at that and you're gonna see it. So two mana deals three damage to all minions. Your hero deals uh, takes double damage until your next turn. So basically you go all in, right? You deal 3 damage to all minions for 2 mana. But then again, if your opponent has any minion left or burst, you're gonna take some serious damage. I think that's pretty good in Warrior both and in Paladin. I really like it. The legendary Tadras, the shield of Teldrazil. 3 mana 2-3 with taunt, battle cry, give all minions in your hand taunt. This is busted. <sighs> I knew it while making the card, but this is omega busted. Do am I feeling bad? Absolutely not. I love this card. I had it at only a warrior legendary, but like it felt really good with uh, Paladin too. So uh, I'm like, yeah, let's give a uh, bodybuilder HS uh, some more uh, good cards, shall we? And uh, yeah, giving me instant is really something big, especially like on the big hand size. Uh, like this is so insanely good against aggro, so insanely good that maybe you buff up the mana, right? You you upped it up to four, 
and you make it like a 2-4 or something like that. It might be too strong, but I love it. I love it so much. The Dubious Factory. Two mana spell, spend all your armor, summon that many 2-2 bots with stones. And the bots are bug bot. Bug bot, bug bot. You know, when you when you say it like quickly, you understand why it's actually a chicken bot. Bug bot. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted this kind of stuff where like you use your armor, but like in a proactive way, not in a defensive way, like shield slam or like um, the stuff fury, flurry. I don't know how it was called again. Uh, the three mana spells. So yeah, you only need seven armor to seven to, to summon seven two two bots with stone for two mana. That's pretty good. But then again, if you have seven armor and your opponent doesn't have anything on the board, most likely the two twos aren't gonna do anything. I mean, not much to your opponent because your opponent is gonna be a control deck. And yeah, against aggro, if you manage to get those seven boom bots, seven bots with taunt, oof, this is uh, a <laughs> this is kind of. Yeah, this is kind of game-breaking, maybe as a 3-mana spell, but then again, I didn't want to give it to Old War. That's the... like, you have to find an even-costed sweet spot to print more um, uh, armor card, because Old War, I mean, for Wild, of course, you have to find that sweet spot, and I think 2-mana might be pretty good for Wild today. And last but not least, the Dwarf Miner. 2 mana, 2, 3, battle cry, if your hero has armor, gain plus 1, plus 1 and rush. So making it a totem golem with rush, reminiscent of like the, the rogue card, right, that gain plus 1, plus 1 and rush if you control, if you had a card in your hand that uh, was from another class. This is basically the same thing. You could play that in even warrior, so like hero power on 1, this on 2, pretty good. And yeah, I wanted to give like some armor support to uh, even cost decks, as I said, and I think this is pretty good. Like, Warrior really lacks the good brush minion on 2. Like, it really lacks uh, uh, this kind of minion, since the Crop Rider nerf. Pray for my crop. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is pretty good. Uh, I said it pretty good, like, you, you, might, you guys might uh, want to <laughs> mute me for this, but yeah, it's still pretty good. Anyway. I think this is the last one for Warrior, so let's hop up onto Paladin. Oh no, we have this one. Oh, oh, fail. Yeah, the Scouting Whelp. So to draw a dragon in a Warrior, what good dragon do you have? You have Scion of Rune. Scion of Rune is so good. So good. And if you play in Galakorn Warrior, this means that most likely you're gonna damage your opponent in the face with like the Invoke or like your early game stuff. So drawing a dragon is not gonna be this hard. So maybe you can run, you can run more rush minion because before you only you really wanted to tutor uh, the sign of rune with your tutor with your rush tutors. Now maybe you can run a bit more rush. I think this is it now. So on pattern we talked about uh, inner power the first uh, dual cast spell. I think this is also good in paladin. Maybe you play that in. Um, in odd, but I don't, no, maybe not in odd. Okay, what what am I saying? Honestly, like this is gonna be hard to find a really good place for a paladin here, but this is a pretty good card. Uh, do you play that in hunt buff? Most likely not, because you would rather have the hand of adol. Uh, where do you play that? That's a good question. Maybe you play that in um, in a Librum. Right, because you're gonna have a lot of buffed up minion, which means a, lo a lot more health on the board, which means it's most likely that you're gonna control a damage minion. But then again, in Librum you might have better stuff to do, so yeah, this is a wait and see card for Paladin. The Fear of Surgeon. So I wanted to push the Silver Hand Recruit synergy, but like not in Odd. Like we've seen Odd Paladin since like the dawn of time, I feel. So let's do something else. So 2 mana 1 2, Battle Cry and Death Rattle, summon a 1 1 silver hand recruit. So I didn't want to go full on the uh, the Haunted Creeper and make it all Death Rattle. This is what I had at the beginning, like all Death Rattle, but I had it at a 2 2. Yeah, it, that was too good. 2 2, summon 2 uh, 1 1 afterward. Mm -mm, too good. So the mix was Battle Cry and Death Rattle. So that's pretty good because like you have one token on the Battle Cry, and even if you clear, you still have one. Uh, I think this is the good mix. Uh, this is the kind of card you would like to have in 
any kind of uh, silver hand recruit deck. In even pardon, yeah, I, I think you might want to have it. Uh, it is is way worse than the death, the full death rattle version with two attack. I know that because of call to arms. Uh, maybe it was not that bad actually. Maybe power creeping haunted creeper is not a crime, and we could have done that. But yeah, I, I like the design how it ended up. The Chrono Splitter, one mana, one two weapon for Paladin and Shaman. Hmm? Battlecry, the next spell you cast on a minion this turn also targets minion next to it. Oof, that's that's pretty strong. That's yeah, I I, I like this card a lot. So Paladin and Shaman have this ability to cast a lot of spells on minions, right? You have Sentimo for Shaman. You have the whole Librom stuff for Paladin. And uh, yeah, by making this, imagine. So okay, so you play, you have some minions. You play this into hand of model. You draw three and you give three of your minions plus two plus one, and we hope plus two plus two when it rotates. Um, this is, and you have a one two weapon. This is insane. Uh, honestly, it wouldn't be surprising if. Uh, I if this was printed as a two drop instead of a one mana card, because this is fucking busted. <laughs> the intimidating guard, uh, two mana one three. After you cast a spell, set the attack of a random enemy minion to one. Uh, is this strong? Yeah. Did I print that because I was sick of facing giants? Yeah. Is it busted? Yeah. Should I should I should I did been uh uh how is it called a spell burst? No, <laughs> because it would be too uh, way too bad as a spell burst. But then again, you can set the attack of the same minion multiple times in a row, so you need a lot of spell to do that. But in this kind of controlish paladin, maybe OTK paladin that won't just to to control the board a bit. Like imagine facing like two giants, you do this coin another spell. And you have a 2 mana 1 3 against 1 attack minions. And what attacks minion in paladins and do against paladins and don't do anything. You can always equality bar of them afterwards. But this is just a game sometimes. And uh, I think it does it very well. The Unnoyo Maximus. 3 mana 3 3 mech with divine shields. Already pretty good. Huh? And after a friendly minion is lose divine shield, gain plus one plus one. Okay, what? Uh, <laughs> this is really good. <laughs> I wanted a powerhouse for the divine shield decks, right? This kind of call to arms paladin that focuses solely on divine shield. We've seen some version of it, but like it lacks a good three drops that you could resummon from Rally, or just just a good three drops, right? A good powerhouse on the early turn before the call to arms. And this is it, I think. Maybe as a 3-2, it would have been uh, more balanced. But yeah, I wanted to print it as a 3-3 because it's in the name, it's annoying. Advent class. Uh, summon a spell for both Paladin and Shaman. Draw a spell, then draw a minion of the same cost that learns the spell. So basically, you draw a spell, then you draw a minion. The spell disappears. And when you play the minion, it's gonna cast a spell, basically like the uh, the Agatha token, right? From Agatha the Witch, the uh, the legendary one, not the hero one, that uh, creates a witch that learns two spells. Well, here you learn, uh, you teach a spell to a minion. And what happens is that I really looked for any way to break this. I didn't find anything. This is like a controlled version of uh, Prismatic Lands. And yeah, I don't find anything to break it, but you have some advantage where like you could have a good spell on a spot where the only minion you have ha can get uh, its count discounted. For example, in a totem deck, you can have a six mana spell like the legendary spell in Shaman and the thing from below, right? So you can instantly play the thing from below or like for a uh, lower cost and have the big spell that costs six mana. Yeah, pretty good. Light Fin Rod, okay. Don't tell me this is not a good name, alright? The Murloc names, ah, I surpass myself. 2 mana 1 3 Murloc for both Paladin and Shan. At the end of the turn, give a, give a friendly Murloc Divine Shield. This is so good. 
<laughs> so if you don't have any other Murloc, it's a 2 mana 1-3 with Divine Shield, which is already good. Uh, but then if you have another Murloc, you give it Divine Shield, or like you have a 50-50, and uh, it goes on. And the thing is, like, even if you don't have any other Murloc, like, it gained Divine Shield so that it's protected for when after you play all the Murlocs, it stick on the board, right? That's pretty good. Uh, giving Divine Shield to Murloc is something that is useful because Murloc decks really want to stick on the board, right? That's what they want. And by giving them Divine Shield, basically you make them, like, more durable. So yeah, it's not aggressively started, but it's really good in what it does. So the Remote Control Protector, we talked about it. Uh, I think this is better in Paladin than uh, Warrior, especially because if you think about the mech on buff deck in Paladin, this exists. Like, in Warrior, this is a dream. In Paladin, it actually existed way before Bodybuilder uh, and uh, Inman just remade the archetype. But, like, this was a deck back in the day, and I think this is really good in this, in the deck. Like, I think this is actually really, really good. Imagine if you buff this twice, so, like, it's a 3-4. You have a 1 mana 3-4 taunt with Divine Shield. Okay, dude. Like, it's... Really, really good. Vorlis, the first disciple, 6 mana 5-5. Five, five. If you cast 5 holy spells this game, summon Shirvala the Tiger. So I wanted a legendary paladin that uh, synergized with uh, holy spells. And I was like, yeah, maybe you can make it summon like a big boy or something if you cast enough holy spell. And I was like, dude, Shirvala. Shirvala is actually quite impressive when it comes on the board. So like, when you play this card, you're like, yeah, I built up all my gameplay to play a bunch of uh, Holy Spell, and now I have Shirvala. Uh, you can even play that in the Shirvala OTK deck, that he, basically an OTK deck, uh, using a lot of Holy Spells. So yes, that's pretty good. Like, casting spells with Shirvala, this is fitting. And five spells mean that you can play that on curve, but not before. And because like all the questline rewards are seven, seven uh, that cost five, this comes back is just after, so that like the the reward is not really a board prison, an annoying board presence, right? You can kill it in one soup with Shavala. That was the design behind it. Purging the Wix, Rimana, legendary spell from uh, Paladin and Shaman. Transform your minion into one that costs one more, so that's an evolve effect. And set their stats to the highest on your battlefield. So basically, this is a way to like purge basically all the low rolls, the low rolls that you can get from an evolve effect. Is this busted? Maybe. Uh, I didn't want to put it at four because it would have been too slow, and I didn't want to put it at two because it would have been omega busted. But yeah, like you're always gonna have uh, some big stuff. So like the high rolls are gonna be more important. Like, more, more, more important. So I know this, like, lift up the average, but, like, maybe it lifts up the, the variance a bit too high, and uh, you don't want that. This is the kind of card you have to test to see if it's really busted, frustrating, or something else. But, yeah, I like the fact that you turn from your minion into random ones, or, like, random stats, but then again, poof, the paladin part comes in, and you set all the stats to the same. That was the idea behind Last ditch effort. So like we talked about the OTK Paladin, this kind of stuff that want to control the board a bit. I think this is really good in this. Uh, you have deal three damage to all minions. This is like a hellfire for two mana. Uh, what is the best comparison? You have a card in Warrior, Sleep with the Fishes, that deals three damage to all damage minion. So like here, it's all minions, right? And you can play this on two to clear the board. Until you clear a board, and most likely your opponent is not gonna have anything else on the board to kill you. So like it's it's really really good in the early game, and it gets worse in the late game, but uh, it's still a good card even in Paladin. Libram of Greatness, seven mana Libram, holy spell, double the stat of minions. Okay, Romanu, what are you doing? Uh, for this to cost zero, you need double Aldor Intendant and double Aldor. Um, the other one, you, you know, the both uh, Libram Regis stuff, and it's still gonna cost one, so then after you need another reduction. And uh, yeah, what is the win con of Libram Paladin? Making big minions? No. Like, the only win con you had was like the 
real Wincon was like the the A, the three mana sister girl, right? The one that when you target her with a spell, it deals three damage. But it it was wonky. Like uh, you don't want that in your deck, do you? Honestly, no. I think that capitalizing on the fact that you have big minions on the board, it's better. Uh, is this really, really good? Like, if you can manage to kill your opponent, this would mean that you reduce your Librum to the lowest point possible, right, so that you invest it a lot, and that you still have a big minions on the board. This means yeah, that your opponent mismanaged their resources, not that you did something broken. Like, this is not beyond broken. This is really good, but this is not beyond broken. Not in a while today. <laughs> so we talked about uh, Tazrus. In Paladin, it's even better than in Warrior because you have a lot of burst draw with like Christology and uh, the Bannerman and Hand of Adol. You have a lot, lot, lot of draw. So like by coming to turn three or four, like playing this, oof. Like, after this, imagine like the new Shrimana guy with lifesteal, the 1-4 that we have. Imagine if you give it taunt. It's GG, over. Like, uh, take back your aggro deck and go back to the collection. <laughs> it's honestly so busted, but I love the design. Like, giving another thing that just stats the minions in your hand was really something I wanted to experiment during the set. 2 mana 1 3 Silver Hand Trainer. After you summon the Silver Hand Recruit, give it plus 1 attack and rush. So it's basically the same card as like the Moloch one, but for Silver Hand Recruit. Uh, what is good with Silver Hand Recruit? Like you give them stats and Divine Shield. This is basically everything we have ever done with the Silver Hand Recruit. But actually giving them rush is good because you don't have any way to come back on the board when you lose the board as a Silver Hand deck. But we've seen that with uh, Odd Paladin. When you lose the board, y your only way back is a broom. So like, is this better than a broom? In some way, yes. Because like, you have this on the board. So, and you can protect it with like your other solo hand recruit. You have a lot of uh, taunt in Paladin to protect it too. So I think it does its job as good as the Moloch one does its job in Moloch Shaman. So let's... Uh, Hop on onto Shaman. So Shaman was the class uh, with the dual card with Paladin, and you're gonna see the other one. I'm not gonna tell you. And I wanted to push like good Shaman archetype that just weren't there quite yet. For example, Totem archetype. One mana, nature spell, Totem empowering. Choose a basic Totem. Summon it plus plus one plus one. So I've done all the comparison on the PDF file. You can look at it, but TLDR, it's not busted at all. Honestly, for a token deck, I think this is really, really great. Like, to have the totem you want on one with plus one plus one, but it's not busted at all. Like, basically, it doesn't draw, so it's not busted. It doesn't kill you when you play it, so it's not busted. So, yes, really great card, I think. Like, this is actually a neat design. Maybe the first Shaman card I made, and actually, wait. Because I think Shaman was the first class I made for this custom set, and this is maybe the first class I made at all. <laughs> ah, let's hop on. The Chrono Splitter, yeah, we talked about that. So in Shaman, we're gonna get more spells to target minion, but honestly, we have seen that in the latest meta in Barons, Zentimo was played. Yes, it was in uh, Galakron Shaman, but actually, like, when you look at that in Galakron Shaman, you want that. You want that instead of the uh, the other one called uh, like you had the Wakagnol at the beginning. Then you had the new uh, the new weapon, the new two mana two two from Stormwind, and I think this is even better to get it being for the Invocation of Frost or even for like the um, the two mana spell that gives you an elemental. Both are really great, and this card is fucking OP. <laughs> The Jade card, so the latest uh, and the last uh, Jade card. So Shramana 3 2 Beast, Battle Cry, summon a Jade Golem. If you've played another Battle Cry card this turn, give it Rush. Basically, I looked at uh, the previous Jade Shaman that we had, and the latest ones all uses like really small Battle Cry minions, so like Tour Guide, Broom, uh, Sludge Thurper, maybe Armor Vendor, to complete the quest, the Oldum quest, as fast as possible. And meaning that in this kind of deck, this is really good because for only one more mana you can have a good battle cry card. 
and give the J Golem Rush. Uh, we have to notice that I have to know that Rush is the best effect out of the three. Like, just <laughs> you still on a five five, you give it Rush. Yeah, that's pretty good. And so I didn't want to give it any more stats. And also the condition had to be a bit more tricky to proc. But in vacuum, I like this card. The fallen one. So yeah, Shaman and uh, Warlock. Uh, I explained everything behind the design of why I chose the dual class card and document, but it's a 4 mana 4 for Battlecry, the next spell you cast this turn cast twice, mm -hmm. Electra, but if it kills at least 2 minions, repeat this effect. Uh, ah, 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 okay, that's pretty good. Uh, this is basically for the kind of deck that wants their spell to cast twice, but don't want to play the quest, right? Uh, Controlish deck, Shadow Walk decks, most likely, this is the idea I had behind. Should have walk, um, should have walk, or like, uh, yeah, Rena Lock. Uh, yeah, that's Electra is a bad card, honestly. Electra is a bad card. Uh, in two days, like, in two days, Hearthstone. It's really, like, even when it was printed, like, people played it because we didn't have anything better to do. Like, it was clearly not the best card in the deck. So, like, by giving it an extra something, we can have something better. Uh, and I think this is a sweet spot. I think this is a really great and really sweet spot. Not the best one, but yeah, you know, it's a shaman falling into the darkness. So it's a fallen one. Hmm. I'm good with names. Advanced class, so we talked about that for Paladin. In shaman, I use the example of Sing From Below and stuff. So I looked at all the really heavy spells, so like 7 and, uh, and more, and you don't have a lot of minions to go with it. So, But maybe you have this, like Eye of the Storm, so you have Eye of the Storm with the new, um, how is it called, the new Gnoll card, Temana Rush, that got, get its cost reduced. So I designed this before Stormwind, and yeah, maybe this is good, maybe this is like a high roll that you can get, but then again, are you really gonna run only a 10 mana spell? Mm, you already run this, right? You already run this as a spell, so basically the same problem as uh, Prismatic Lens. It, it's good, honestly, I don't think this is breakable with the card we have, but this is definitely, this definitely has the potential to be breakable, to be breakable, sorry, or to be broken. The Lightning Rod, we talked about this, and in Shaman, I think this is even better than in Paladin. Uh, we've seen that Murloc Shaman is... Like, it's quite here, it's almost here, like, just need a little more push, a little less uh, super fast deck in the meta, and this is one of the most consistent aggro deck, I would say, if it had a bit more draw consistency on the board, and this is consistency on the board, this is not draw, but this is good board control. Yeah, do you have the the spot, though? Because the Morlock Shaman is stacked, like it's really stacked when you look at the deck list, you don't want to put anything out. So maybe this is not good enough, but I think it is. I think it is. Let me know in the comments if you think that this is enough for a Morlock Shaman, or maybe not at all. Paralysis, one mana shadow spell for Shaman and Warlock. Mm, interesting. Overload 1, both player for 2 turns. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that uh, you get overloaded, right? you get overloaded on the next turn, your opponent is overloaded, uh, on the next next on your next turn you overload it, on their next turn they overload it, on your uh, next next turn you're not overloaded anymore. This is the ID. Uh, <laughs> basically, this is a card that, like against combo deck, lets you have the time to draw a specific card to counter the the deck you're facing. And I think that's neat. Like I didn't want to go full on overload two for one turn, boss player, because like mana burns already feels really bad to face. So yeah, I, I went through all that, and I think that's actually a good design. Okay, speaking of not good designs, the Wind Clamor, 2 mana 2 3, whenever you cast a spell, summon a 1 1 Nimbus Wind Fury, and the minion itself, like the, the Wind Clamor, has Overload 1. Uh, yeah, I love Conquer Pakrunner, maybe a bit too much, 
But I wanted to see what happens when you summon tokens with Wind Fury, because this is very breakable. Like, you can abuse this in so many, way, so many different ways by buffing the minions, because buffing the tokens means that like you actually double buff them, and that's pretty good. But, like, giving Wind Fury, how good is it? Maybe I'm overestimating how good it is. But like we have seen that with Battleground Battlemaster, when you give Wind Fury to a lot of minions, it's good. So like summoning a lot of minions with Wind Fury would be good too? I don't know. Uh, maybe this is like the case of, yeah, you have to put it as 3 mana to be good, to be uh, balanced. But yeah, I want to try something like that. You know, to go in another route of just spell casting Ghost Face. Like, you know, the, the Burst Shaman with Trog and all. You can do a Trog deck with this. But like board controlish, not mm, me smork, me me play face, uh, me play spell to the face. Yeah, wait and see. Okay, so we I know I know shaman players. Your favorite totem got uh, destroyed, absolutely murdered in cold blood. So I'm putting it back. One mana zero two totem, wicked totem, with spell damage plus one and corrupt. It summon a copy of itself on battle cry basically. Uh, that's a good card for totem decks because it goes wide, the spell damage isn't really that useful in, to in totem decks, but it's quite good. And in burst deck, well, you're probably gonna play cards that cost more than two, so like having plus two spell damage can be pretty good, especially on two different minions. Because on one minion, like, your opponent only have to clear one minion to get rid of both spell damage. Here you have to clear both minions, if this makes any sense. So yeah, I like it. It's neat, and the art was just too good. I could not... Like, after I've seen the art, I had to make a totem that corrupted itself. I had to. I had to! <laughs> the Fry Elemental. 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one Elemental. Battle Cry, if you are overloaded, draw an Elemental. So, it had a very different effect back in the day, but then they printed uh, Overdrafts. And I had basically a minion that had the same effect as Overdraft. Either you were overloaded, and it uh, unlocked your mana crystal, or you drew a card. That was the first uh, design, but then it printed overdraft, so I had to redo it because it was way too close. And I think I like it like that. It's a 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one that can draw an elemental under a certain condition. The condition is quite annoying. Do you play that in uh, Questline Shaman, which is close to be a scary deck, but is gonna get nerfed on the next patch, so Prage. Uh, that is, it's not gonna break the format after Warlock. And yeah, I think this is neat. I had it as a 2-1, but as a 2-1 it was maybe a bit too much. Like, I realized, like, imagine you go 1-mana 2-1 into 1-mana 2-1 into Cage Mash Custodian. Like, bro, you drew 3 cards, you play 3 Elemental, and you still have the full hand. What? Uh, yeah. 1-1-1-1, <laughs> it's okay. Purging the Wick, we talked about it in Evil Shaman, I think this is a really, really good spell, uh, because Evil Shaman is always about that nice high roll, uh, no, the high roll or even better. Uh, is it good? I mean, is it balanced? No. Is the deck Evil Shaman good? No, because it doesn't have consistency, and in the deck like that, to have bigger high roll, you also want it to have consistency, so that your high roll actually more consistent, so that they become not really a high roll, but just what the deck is here to do. And Evil Shaman is not there. Like, it still have, has to run the wonky card, like the 5 mana weapon, right? It's so bad now at 3 attack in this meta, most of all. You still have to run cards like, uh, uh, maybe not Double Gangster, but like the... Like, you don't have board control except of the turn you evolve into. So I think this is okay in Evil Shaman. 6 mana 6 6 Phantasmagoric Shadowlock. Battle Cry triggers all friendly Battle Cries targets chosen randomly. <laughs> I had to redo Shadowlock. I had to redo Shadowlock. We're doing a wild set, guys. I had to redo it. Uh, as 6 mana, maybe too low. Maybe 7 was better. Uh, Barista is not a card you can consider to be strong anymore, I feel. Not in this meta. Not in this, uh, and not uh, looking forward with all the quest line stuff. Barista feels too slow. So, like, triggering battle cries that are already on the board, 
what's something that I wanted to experiment and I think they will in the future. I think they will uh, experiment with it and yeah honestly that's it's fun I like it and yeah love it. <laughs> the talented ogre, very talented ogre. So it's a uh, 2-2 for our Shaman and Warlock, Spellbird summon a 2-2 two, two Demonic Elemental with Taunt. So basically, like, it's a failed invocation, right? It's an Ogre, it doesn't do things correctly, it tries to summon something, but in the end it summons a Demon Elemental. Like, not the one he probably wanted. So yeah, it's just... Like, it's not really complex, design-wise. It's 4-4 four, four of stats for 2, uh, half of it has Taunt, I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Spellburst is not hard to proc in Shaman or Warlock, especially not in Shaman. And it just needs maybe uh, even Shaman or Warlock. I like it. I like it a lot. The Experience Summoner. Shaman, Warlock, dual class cards, 3 mana 3 is 3, battle cry, invoke Galakron, and give the minions lifesteal. So in Shaman it's a 3 mana 3 3, summon a 2 1 with Rush and Lifesteal. And in Warlock it's a 3 mana 3 3, summon 2 1 1 with Lifesteal. <laughs> That's really good. I really like this design. Um, I, I love the dual class invoke card. Like, these were so fun to make. And I think the result is. Like, it speaks for itself. It speaks for itself, really. It's so fun. Like, what? I love it! I really love it! <laughs> it's really good in both Galakron Shaman and Galakron, War and Galakron uh, Warlock, uh, where you actually want to gain a bit of that HP. Uh, and it's fun now because all the class cards, all the invoke class cards for Warlock cost 3 mana now, so I think that's fun too. Oh, we, f we end up here. So let's hop on onto Warlock, the latest one, because we already did Demon Hunter afterward. So, like, this was, I'm gonna say it's the last class, and this was really fun to make. No, no, I'm not gonna, you know what, I'm not gonna do uh, the, oh my god, this was so fun to make, I'm gonna make that at the end. So, Van Helsing Von Orc, 3 minus 3, 4 minus 3, 5, I had it as a 3, 5 in Warlock. I think I had it as a 2, 5 in the, this, in the, uh, the age. Another case of like the two uh, in both folders are not the same exactly, but yeah, I think that draw demon and the destroyer minion, like this is what you would like in some kind of cube lock maybe, uh, in some kind of arena lock also, like you have a lot of destroyer and demons, and yeah, the idea is just need right, it's a demon hunter basically, hunting demons and uh, destroyer minions because like it's in a graveyard if you look at the art. I like it, I like it. It's not... I think it's better than cards like Barak and Watley. But these weren't really good, like Watley you don't play that. And Barak you play that because it's Hunter and Hunter doesn't have Juro. But in Warlock and Demon Hunter, class that's, classes that already have a bunch of Juro, you needed to have a good card to make it work. Oh, can we... yep. The Fail Scale, so it's better in Warlock than in Demon Hunter. Uh, especially because Warlock already had some good dragons and uh, basically if you want to build like a Maligos deck this is really good in this because you're probably gonna draw your few dragons early on and this is gonna be a 2 mana 3 2 deal 2 like to kill the board this is pretty good uh, to deal damage phase this is pretty good you know to try and chip your opponents down a bit like honestly it's neat design it's not busted the art is amazing, like it goes for pur from purple on the left to green, that's perfect. And yeah, I just love it, I love dragons so much. Ooh, the Nefer set toll here. 2 mana 3 2, battle cry, destroy a minion, and resummon it with plus 1 plus 1. So we had this 3 mana card that has bas that had basically the same effect without a plus 1 plus 1 in Priest, and the card never saw play. Like, I really tried to make it work, it didn't. And in Warlock, I wanted to push like this minion sacrifice deck, you know? Like you sacrifice minion to get your other minions more stuff, like better and and all. I think it's very, very fitting for the class. 
and I don't know, like, if you don't have any minion, it's a 2 mana 3 2. Uh, you don't get the buff immediately because you can't attack with this or make a trade with the buff. I think it's balanced, I think stat wise it's really good, but it's balanced nevertheless. Oof, Snix the Candle Master, okay, okay, okay. 5 mana 6 6 Taunt Lifesteal, okay, what the fuck? Uh, if you killed at least 7 minions on your turn, this is drawn on turn 5, not before. So this is really interesting. Why? Uh, sorry, right? I wanted... I saw this card on a hearse card that said just drawn on turn 4. I was like, what? And like, dude, that's so good! And I wanted to do something like that. So, if you manage to sacrifice enough minions uh, before turn 5, this is going to be the, the card you're going to draw at the beginning of your turn 5, right? If you kill 7 minions, like the first 7 minions you kill yourself, right? Yourself, is after turn 5, this is going to be the first card you draw afterwards. Uh, that's really good, for two reasons, because if you manage to have it on turn 5, it's a 6-6, six, six, don't lifesteal, and you play basically with 29 cards before turn 5. Mm -hmm. You play basically with 29 cards. And I was thinking, like, is it busted? Like, do you play that in a deck without even using a minion sacrifice? I don't think so. I, I actually don't think so. Uh, like, it's not breakable in this way, but you would play that in a lot of deck. Like, in a lot, lot, lot of deck. So maybe you only put this, like, a 5 on a 5-5 five, five with Taunt and Lifesteal. Because it's... If you look at that, the condition is also um, is also an advantage, like a buff, like not having not uh, being able to draw it. It's kind of good, even if the card itself is good. It's kind of good. So yeah, I think the design is really good. I don't know about the the writing, but you understand the idea. So we talked about the fallen one. You can play that with like the file. You can play that with plague of flame. You can play that with... Uh, I don't know. Okay, so I don't know how it would work with uh, Hysteria. I'll have to look at uh, similar uh, uh, synergies between cards. But yeah, Hysteria, basically the minions are killed by other minions, not by the spell. So yeah, what I've seen. But yeah, you have so much Ailey in Warlock. You could play that with Naily and then play, for example, another spell that not an AD, for example, backfire. You know, if you don't have, like, you're uh, on turn 8, something like that, you don't have a lot of cards in hand, you play this plus Plague of Flame, so basically you're always going to kill two minions, and then you play backfire with your 6 card. That's pretty good. <laughs> so Consume the Soul, we talked about it, I think this was the first card we talked about. So tradable Echo, destroy a soul fragment in your deck to summon a 2-2, Fellhound with Rush, and it's a 1-mana fell spell with tradable. Uh, yeah, in Warlocks, uh, in Warlock, in Warlock, in Warlocks, you actually want the heal more than in DH, but uh, it's also... And like, as I said, like sometimes you just don't want the fragments in Seraphim Matchups, you want the board's presence, and... God, the more I look at it, the more I love this card. That's insane. It's so good. Like, it's okay. It's so good. Okay, ah, wait, guys, don't tell me you don't like this card. I would play that even if the deck is bad. I would play it, at one hundred percent of the time. So good. <laughs> Worst review ever. <laughs> okay, so paralysis. Um. I was thinking, like, if I put it in Warlock, I don't want it to be another low tip for, like, dialer decks. So, like, overloading for one only is okay, I think. It's okay. Uh, maybe that's still annoying. Maybe you run that in... Uh, maybe you still run that in dialer because of, like, Tamsmin, meaning that you are gonna get an extra copy for zero, and it might be good with, like, if they play a giant or something like that. It's a risky card to print for Warlock too. It's a risky for Shaman it's okay. Like it's really okay for Shaman. But for Warlock it's quite risky. Uh, it's not low the power level, but it can be quite annoying. But we hope that all the nerfed to Warlock and the probable ban to the questline and the other nerf to Warlock is gonna kill Dagler once and for all. Copium. <laughs> it's never gonna kill Dagler dude. Oh my god. 
Okay, so demon lose one mana shadow spell, give your demons plus one plus one. Hmm, neat. Uh, I think that uh, shadow spells, uh, rare, one mana, give your minion plus one plus one under certain condition in Warlock is something that we are going to get each expansion. I think that's cool, I'm okay with this. And is the condition really that better than the other one? You know, you have uh, either discard the lowest cost card in your hand or like destroy minion. And I think honestly that if you play a full demon deck, you want this. Uh, the Shady Bartender is a card that is really good, but like, we just can't play it because all the Warlock decks using the Dark Lair and the Quest are just so much faster. But if it if they aren't, I think that going Zoo might be might be an, an ID. And I think this is a good card in Zoo. The Impulsive Gunner. So we talked about this. Uh, you can run this in Galakrond Warlock, and I think that's a great ID because you have a lot of token generation. And you have a lot of way to summon token, you have some of the cards that I will show you afterward. But it can be a 0 mana 5 5 rush. And it's a demon. So, maybe, actually, actually maybe you play that in Q-Block. Maybe you play that in Q-Block just to have uh, this 5 5 rush that can come out of a Void Color, but m most likely, if you play like a heavy Q-Block, a Q-Block heavy on the early game with Plague of Flame, you can play that quite easily before the Void Color. And on Gul'dan it's a 5-5 with Rush, or maybe a 7-7 with Rush, depending on if you have Morganis or not. I think this is really good in Warlock too. The Impatient Swarm. So one mana fell spell, deem one damage to an enemy minion, and summon two 1-1 one -one imps to attack their, its neighbors. So, if your opponent only have one minion, this is summon two 1-1 one -one imps and deal one damage. This is busted. Uh, if your opponent has two minions, it's a 1-1 one -one that deals one damage to both. And if your opponent has three minions, it's basically just a shooting star. I had it at two mana, deal two, but summon only two 1-1 one -one still. And uh, how to say that? It was... it felt maybe too good. Uh, maybe too bad, sorry. Because compare this to uh, Grievous Bites, nobody ever played Grievous Bites. I think this is good. Is it too good in... Um, Cute lock? I don't think so, because raised it is really important in the deck, and you want to raise it zero, zero drop, or impactful one drop, not just one ones. But in this kind of sacrifice your minions, uh, summon a bunch of minions, it's it's good, it's really good. The talented ogre, so we talked about it in even lock. So even lock have seen a resurgence recently, and maybe you don't play that in even lock then, but maybe you do because it's still. A like two minions, and two minions are pretty good when you want to get. Uh, uh, okay, maybe it's not that good because it messes up with raised it. So that's that's a problem because like you don't really want to get the two two tone back. But I still think it might find a place somewhere. I don't know where in Warlock, but it will if it got rooted. The Spreader of Fear, okay, this is a really interesting design. 3 mana 3 3 demon, Death Rattle will give plus 2 attack and this Death Rattle to a random friendly minion. So we had this card that gave its that gave its attack to another minion. It was one of my favorite cards ever, but like never saw play. So I wanted to tweak it a bit. And by doing this, by not giving its attack, because if you give if you if you write give this minion's attack and this death rattle to minion, like it scales up because the next minion is gonna get is gonna give its own attack plus the attack of the first one to another one and it's just gonna be exponentially uh, bigger and we don't want that <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's talk at two attack it's already really good in a deck where you spam the board it's death rattle to synergize with the death rattle synergy we had. And yeah, I think that's pretty good because your opponent now has have to your opponents have to clear your whole board. Uh, because if they don't, like the buff is still gonna pass on minions. That's really interesting, and I think that's a good card for Zoo type decks. Soul Jailer, one mana one one demon, death rattle. If another minion died this turn, summon a two two shadow. So basically, I wanted to tweak uh, the Possessed Villager and make it maybe a bit better in the deck where it's good. The deck where it's good, it's Zulok. In Zulok, now the, the Villager is too slow. 
So what about making it so that the payoff of the Death Rattle is better? A 2-2, a 2-2 is really good. Uh, if you play as a deck, like as a Death Rattle, it means that when your opponent clears, you still have bodies on the board, and that's what you want as a board-centric deck, obviously. Um, playing it on one is bad, that's for sure. Except if you play it alongside all dominions. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's not that good, and I could have had it as a 1 mana 2 1, so an, another 2 1. Maybe that was better. Like to redistribute the, the power level a bit. Yeah, that was better, I think. No, there's nothing about it. But uh, I must have I must have my uh, my way of doing that. Why I chose to not put it here. But yeah, anyway, it's neat cards. So the experience when are giving life steal to the tokens. Ooh, in Galakron Warlock, I love it. Uh yeah, yeah, it it just pretty good. Like, what do you want me to say? <laughs> it's pretty good. Um. Yeah, Galakron Warlock, you need, in Galakron deck you need the highest possible concentration of invoke cards so that you can have your Galakron on curve and your uh, bonus cards like the, if you invoke twice, on curve 2. And by playing this, if you have the coin, you can coin an invoke on 3 into another invoke to have the 4 mana 1 uh, draw 3 cards on 4. And giving the life still, giving the minion life still, like, it's not that bad. Like, it's not that busted, I mean. Right, it just, it's all just one one. If you buff them, then it's better, of of course. But just one ones. So, do we have anything else? No. So I propose we hop on to the last part, which are the neutral cards. Let's go. So finally, the last part, the Metal Fin Hunter. I mean, uh, sorry, the neutral. <laughs> the neutral. So I have less neutral than I wanted. But uh, then again, I you know I started my university year and I have to focus on it now, so I wanted to send everything I have. This is basically almost a full set. I think I have 120 cards or something like that. Uh, so basically a full set. Okay, so let's open to the neutral. First off, three mana two two metal fin hunter. It's a mech. What? Rush magnetic. Death rattle summon a two one motor gill with rush. Uh, yeah, like this, the art is so good. You can't tell me the art isn't good. Like, the art is so good. Uh, it's basically from an ideal for damage if you just want to clear minions. And yeah, it can give rush to another mech. Neat. We're gonna go fast on the neutral. The second hand explorer, 11111, battle cry, cast a side quest from your deck. So, I know the side quests are gonna get. Even better the, with the more the with the larger the card pool is in wild, but on the other hand, like you might want to play something better than just side quest. And for all the side quests we had, none of them are really busted. We have the paladin one, the odd paladin one, so this could go in amp in odd paladin, but it only tutors two cards, right? That you can't even play alongside each other. Maybe not then, but it can be good like in Druid, for like the quest, quest line Druid. Uh, in Mage we had the nice quest line with the elementals and stuff. It can have its use. The Fate Wister Cobalt, 2 mana, 2, 3, battle cry, your opponent can't draw more than one card next turn. So this is a card made by uh, Martian Boo, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, <laughs> Hello Martian, if you're looking at the video. And yeah, I wanted to put the card in because it's, it's actually a good idea in Wild. Like, if you run a 2 mana 2 3 vanilla minion that doesn't do anything against aggro, the effect must be good as a deck card. And like this, it just stops your opponent one turn. Like, they can't pop off on their combo turn, for example, until the turn afterward. The turn after. So, yeah, it's just like, wait one turn, please combo deck. Please le let me leave one more turn so I have one chance to win the game. Yeah. 2 mana 2 3, the famous. Cartographer, but Christ shuffles three maps into your deck that discover a card from your deck when drawn. So I remember seeing this card on the custom Hearthstone page. I don't remember what page, and that's the problem because I couldn't find the original. I'm pretty sure it was a dual class Rogan Hunter one, but I think a lot of decks would use that because discovering cards from the deck is pretty good. Like, this is just better draw. Like, shuffle two. Uh, Basically, three random cards into your deck, 
are gonna become better at draw. Uh, that that's good. That's good. Toxic Augment Churnt, 1 mana 2 1, Battle Cry, deal 1 damage to a minion and give it poisonous. I'm pretty sure this was an ID uh, that Team 5 uh, just threw away because it was too good. I'm, pr I'm sure the thing is a thought about that. And yeah, giving poisonous to a minion is busted. Like, it's beyond busted. Like, just for 1 mana and deal 1 damage to it, it's busted. Uh, I was thinking, like, if, you, if we still have a giant meta, this is really good. But uh, it's so good in a lot of aggro decks, right? Uh, like, will you play that in Pirate Warrior? Like, if Reno decks come back, will you play that in Pirate Warrior? Maybe not, maybe not. But like in odd decks. Certainly in odd world you play that, right? Certainly you do, right? Maybe not, actually. You need to have enough health on your minions, so you need to play mid range maybe? I don't know. It's, it's still, it's good. The big bad bold. <laughs> 4 mana 3 4 legendary. Battle cry send an enemy flying for a turn. When it drops, it damages the minion below it. So basically, you uppercut a minion into the sky for one turn, and at the beginning of your next turn, it drops back. And depending if there is one or two minions on the spots where uh, the minion you send flying was, like it's gonna damage one or the, the one or the two minions, basically doing the betrayal effect. And that's good because like, if you can't deal with a minion for a turn, you can send it flying in, and it comes back and deals with two other minions, and then you can deal with the, the first minion, because maybe you drew an answer, or maybe you needed more mana. One mana one three Cobalt Twister, at the end of the turn, reduces the cost of all corrupt cards in your hand by one. Uh, that's a one mana one three with the Taurus sun effect, what the fuck? No, because like most likely you only have three cards that can get corrupted in your hand maximum. So it's a one 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 three that discounts three cards. It's not busted, but it's fun for the kind of deck that just want to go full on greedy. Uh, you know, Wild is here for that too. Like a full on greedy card in casual and stuff. This is the card for this kind of deck. Seven mana four six rush stampeding hypo beast and so rush and also damages the minions next to whomever this attacks so i had it as a 3-6 for the longest time and i was like dude if you play a 7 drop you can at least kill the minions you damage <laughs> so this is good in like big decks i hate big decks uh but yeah maybe in this meta they could like okay have fun dude yeah, t take this take this you know take the crumbs I'm gonna leave you with the crumbs, and I'm gonna play the the, the powerful decks, right? That's basically it. <laughs> uh, Imprison undead, two mana three three, two mana three three. Dawn for two turn. When it awakens, destroy a mana crystal for both player. And that's basically the paralysis effect for the rest of the game on the minion, and I like it. I think that's a neat card that you could play in. I don't know, some, maybe you play that in Tax Paladin. Yeah, actually that was, that was the idea, wasn't it? You play that in Tax Paladin, with Call to Arms and stuff, so that your opponent has less mana every time, because every card is gonna mana tax your opponent, so that's fun. <laughs> because the deck is bad, so that's fun. And yeah, that's a neat tech card, and you're gonna see there is a lot of different tech cards here. 1 mana 1, 3, Guard Mummy, spells cannot cost less than 1. Neat. I think this is one of the perfect cards. Like, just like a Nerable Weblord, this is the kind of card that is not gonna get played for two years, and when we're gonna have a spell-heavy discount meta, full bullshit, mage, poo poo pew 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 pew, uh, yeah, you, you, you put that in your deck so that your opponent cannot just bullshit you out of the game. And the Umber Giant, 10 mana, 8-8 eight, eight, elemental, cost one less for each elemental you've played this game. So, I've run the numbers, the earlier you can play this is turn 8, and for this you need like double Firefly plus another elemental I'll show you afterward, uh, is turn 8, is turn 4, sorry, but then you need, as I said, 4 cards, and you don't have anything else in hand, and this is gonna happen once out of every uh, thousand hundred times, that's okay. Because like elemental decks are all in putting on some stats on the board, so if they don't have a win condition, at least give them big stats. 
The Megazord mech, 3 mana, 2, 3 legendary, give all mechs in your hand magnetic. Yeah, that's like uh, Tadrus, right? But for mechs and magnetic. Uh, that's pretty good. I don't know how it would work with magnetize with mech that have a battle cry. Like, would you be able to use a battle cry when you magnetize the mech? Because we don't have something that uses both in the game. So I don't know how it would work, but I think this is neat. I just think this is neat. <laughs> I just think that's it. <laughs> Insert the the Marge meme. Uh, yeah, not busted, but really good in mech deck. One mana, one two. Bulgar Witch. Death Rattle. Add the card that killed it to your hand. It costs one less. So basically, if a minion kills that, you get the minions. If the sp if a spell kills that, you kill you get the minion. If you use my Hysteria and it dies by the attack of a minion, you get the minion, not the spell. That's how I thought it would work. And yeah, that's just nice, right? Because if your opponent if you're playing board centric, like you're gonna get the good minion from your opponent, and most likely it's gonna be a good minion, <laughs> right? Because your opponent is playing it. It costs one less because you know why it's, it's just rattle, it's wild, like come on, give me some mana reduction a bit. Like it's not busted. It's fun. Okay, so when I said I wanted to buff Ktoon, two mana three two Abyssal Acolyte, uh, Battlecry, if your Ktoon... I missed, I missed the H, fuck. Uh, if your Ktoon has at least 10 attack, reduce its cost by 2, wherever it is. So that's the payoff card for Ktoon, right? I was thinking, I was brainstorming, I was like, how do you make Ktoon works? And the only idea I had was like, well, you reduce its cost. And... Congrats, Romano, you broke the game. Um, yeah, I think that if you want to make Toon viable, you need to reduce its cost, right? Buffing it to Oblivion, this is not a problem, but like reducing its cost, then throwing it, like these are the problem. And because you run around a lot of vanilla minions, like you can you can go all in on the Toon buffs, and I think this is a really good Toon buff. One mana, one three Murloc, Crustacean Driver, <laughs> Crustacean Driver. <laughs> it's like Crowd Rider, but like with other words. Uh, one and a one three Rush Taunt Murloc. Uh, yeah, it's basically a Void Walker with Rush. Is it busted? No. Uh, I had it at a two mana one four, because but it felt really underwhelming compared to Crab Rider, the first iteration. I, I wanted to make something for the crab, my boy the crab. And yeah, the art is amazing. I think the name is amazing. I, I I didn't miss any Murloc name. You can't tell me that I didn't miss a single one. That, they're all insane. Uh, and yeah, I think you could use that in Murloc decks, you could use that in Taunt. Warrior, in Warrior you could use that a lot. In Paladin maybe you could use that a lot. In Shaman, Murloc Shaman, a lot of use for this card. Dragon Slayer, 2 mana 2, 2 Dragon, Battlecry, if you've invoked twice, reduce the cost of Galakron by 2, wherever it is. <laughs> yeah, basically the same one as for Ktoon, but for Galakrond, and this is way more breakable because Galakrond already costs 7, not 10. But then again, like, if you weren't Galakrond in your deck, come on, dude. Like, in the meta we are going into, with all the quest line and stuff, you can at least play that. You can you can at least have a five mana Galakron, maybe three mana Galakron, maybe zero mana Galakron if you manage to run both of these. Uh, but yeah, yeah, on seven, on, so on turn seven you can run double of these Galakron for zero. <laughs> okay, maybe that's a bit smart. <laughs> so the Galakron they're gonna have double. Okay, maybe <laughs> maybe that's a bit much. But, uh, you know, it's Dragon, it goes well in Galakrond deck. Uh, I love the effect. I wanted to do it for Ktoon and Galakrond. 2 mana, 2, 3, Foreign Merchant. Battle Cry, give all cards in your hand that did a start in your deck tradable. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the card you can put in every funny, a random deck full on generation that you play in casual card. Right? You play that. Because if you like generate a bad card, you don't want it, you want something else, well you trade it away and you get another card. And the card still has tradable, because like giving tradable to a card, like it's not gonna lose it. And that's the ID I had. I know buffs, uh, when they go to the deck, you don't have them afterward, but like tradable, it should it should work because like you use the tradable mechanic. 
Like it's not how to say that it's not shuffle in the deck because of a card of the opponent, right? It's shuffled in deck because of the tradable effect. So it it has to be a stack on. But yeah, it's a really good card, I think. It, I, I honestly think it's a really good card. Like, fun, usable in many decks, fun as competitive, it's good. 2 mana 2 3, Faceless Key Warden. After you summon a Taunt Minion, give it plus 2 health. Yep, plus 2 health. So, obviously, it's the Parade Leader, but for Taunt, and uh, because you don't want to give attacks to Taunt, you want to give them health. Maybe you play that in like the small Tondrut, maybe you don't. Uh, I just wanted to do the opposite way of the Paradeader. I think it can find a way to be good. If not now, maybe after. Oh yeah, the Motor Guild. This is the token for the uh, the first card we saw. So I just took the art uh, from the bottom one. Uh, 2 mana, 2, 3, Dragon, Crystal, Clear, Drake, Taunt. So 2 mana, 2, 3, Taunt, Dragon, already good. And Frenzy, gain plus 1 health and lifesteal. So, yeah, <laughs> if you deal 1 damage to this, it becomes a 2 mana, 2, 3 taunt lifesteal, which is pretty good. I had it gain 2 health, I was like, okay, well, I knew that's a bit too much, I know you love dragons, but come on. I think that's okay, that's a neat taunt, right, that's a really good taunt, if you want to go in defensive dragon decks. Nothing else to say, it's pretty good. The budding cheater after your opponent add a card to the hand, add a copy of it to yours that costs one more. So basically, like it's a cheater, right? It's writing uh, the its notes on its arm, but like because it's bad, <laughs> it's it's reading it all wrong so that the card costs one more. So at worst, it's like a three three five, a Shumana two five that gets one card from your opponent, just like the key, key warden uh, Ivory. I think the legendary first comments. I wanted to do something cheaper. You know, to like, if your opponent is gonna draw a bunch of cards and gonna bullshit you, you could at least do almost the same. That's it! Oh my god, so many! That's it. I did all the cards. Let's let's talk. Let's say let's, <laughs> let's sit here. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I did all the cards. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this little series. I'm not gonna do it again soon. No, <laughs> it was so time consuming. Uh, but it was so fun too. Like I had a really great time. I understand now the struggle that uh, card designers and devs have. So like, please guys, when you see a card uh, that is really good, do please do not flame every designer you come across on Twitter or Reddit. Please, like they already have <laughs> a hard time. But yeah, it's really fun. If if any of you wanted to like try and do something like that, if I could do it, you can too. So like, yeah. Uh, and don't forget to like, tell me what cards, what cards you preferred in the in the in the comments. I would actually love to hear that. And yeah, that was Romanu for you, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.